Hello, and welcome back to the Game Bet Match podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Manny Friedman, along with my co-host. Brad Sloan. It's It's been a while. We haven't been uh, potting for, what, since October? It might have been early, yeah, late October, early November, since Paris yeah. Masters. There's just, you know, it's, it's, it is, you know, you don't realize, it's like, it's strange, because, like, tennis has an off-season. Mm-hmm. But, like, it also doesn't because so many of these guys play the Xos and such. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, it, like, there's, like, there's, I guess, like, a better way to put it is, like, there's more off-season than you think. There is. But also, I mean, no excuse for not potting, but, like, I I moved from uh, New Jersey to Rhode Island, and, like, we did, it, it was just hard for us to pod, like, from a personal standpoint. But uh, bigger and better things uh, coming for 2024. Um, we'll I be- agree. There's just not much like there's just it, it wasn't a bad time because there wasn't much to pot. I mean, right. since Paris Masters, there wasn't much to pot. I mean, sure. There, there's a little bit of ATP finals, and we definitely posted picks and stuff during the ATP finals. But like, there's just it's it's a uh, it's amazing how quick the tennis season like kind of you know fades out. Yeah, yeah. Like there's a t- I mean, there's still challenger action. There's still out- action out there, but it's just not like it's not as much and it doesn't get me as excited. Well, I hit the Davis Cup. Um... The Davis, Cup the Davis Cup? I didn't even really follow it that closely. Italy won. Oh, that's right. That's right. Sinner. Yes. Sinner yep. saved, yep. Sinner Sinner saved three yeah. match yep. points against Djokovic. Yep. That's right. Keep yep. Italy alive. And then he beat Djokovic again in doubles. That's right. I remember and that now. Yeah. He beat Australia. So yep. like, that was a crazy. It was like three match points down for Davis Cup. Like, like if he lost those match points, they would have been out of Davis Cup. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, uh, that was exciting. Um, yeah, but uh, 2024 will be up on Spotify, as I said. Uh, we'll see if we'll still be up on YouTube. We probably will. Um, you know, we'll track our picks. We'll be kind of more organized, and we make adjustments as as we go. So uh, it's yeah, not... definitely be more organized in our in our pick management. I got really bad yeah. about that at the end of the year. Um, I think you know, or not. I mean, the end of the year, and just like by by middle of the year, we just we need to organize there. Um, Mm-hmm. We we even forgot our slogan though, man. Our back in the house baby slogan. We yeah, that's about that true. After two, <laughs> after two months, so that's true. But nine hundred followers in year one, not quite eight seventy. So I, it's better than I ever would have expected. So oh, I know. I'm amazed we got over like fifty. To be honest, like amazing. amazing. So so thank you to the followers who followed us all, you know, throughout the year, and and, and uh, especially some of the guys who were in early, um, who were in on the first month, like really helped to kind of grow it up and, and really appreciate those guys for helping out mm-hmm. guys like klaus Fulgard, uh tidbits tennis come at me bro like those were they, they were some of the ogs j rod j well j rod j rod was like an m and an mg but he's like uh <laughs> he's like a he's like a master gangster master gangster <laughs> um because he kind of came in the yeah. middle but like he's been definitely definitely help, helping out ever since oh yeah oh yeah so we plan to do uh two preseason pods right today we'll be um, a pod where we have it's three going to be three segments it's going to be the first segment we're going to do something fun we're going to pick fantasy teams uh with a snake draft style of eight players each and we're going to calculate who has the better team with ranking points at the end of the year and whoever does will win either a hundred bucks or a dinner bet or some something something it's got to be a dinner bet next time you come dinner down bet. to jersey <laughs> how am i still up at dinner i think i'm still up at dinner you're still up with dinner. Yeah, I think you're you're up 2 one. Yeah, and what else? Um, and we have the and we still have fees that we have fees out there for this year. You have fees to make right. the top 20, right? Uh no, top 10. Ugh. Top 10. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. gonna be tough. He but he just has to get in. He doesn't have to stay in all year. He just right. has to crack. Just has to crack it. Just has to yep. crack it. And then um, and then I have minus the next two years, I have over one and a half um masters titles from Americans in the next two years. For Americans. Okay. With the rise of Shelton, you might. You might have that in the back. And I think one is a push, right? We said one is a push, a push and two right. is a win for me in the next right. two years. So right. that, yeah. So we got that going. Um, so that'll be one segment. The second segment we're going to do is, is also going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be hypothetical over unders. So we're going to come up with some scenarios which are not available on books. They, they might be, but most likely not. And we're going to come up with a line for it and see where we stand. And that's going to be a way to also recap 2023 and look forward to next year. Um, And the third segment will be um, high, who will be ranked higher and we'll pick two players. You know, we'll kind of each give our rationale and we'll also track if we, if we have any disagreements, 
we will um, see who does better at the end of the year. So that's that's another segment we'll do. So um, so let, let's get right into it. Um, so I guess let's start with our with our draft. Um, yeah, yep. Yeah. So I, I can start. The first pick, pick. Yep. is, is going to be pretty easy. I, I, I There's no way I can't take Djokovic. He's just okay. he's just way too. I mean, despite the fact that he's a part time player, like he's just too he's just too dominant. Like not to and then like I, I don't think we can say that Djokovic is not going to be number one until somebody takes it away from him at this point. Okay, um, you don't think Father Time is gonna gonna hit him at I any? I mean, point? it could, but, but like, I mean, why why would it this year not not last year or the year before? I mean, like. Obviously, with every year, it's more of a, more and more of a concern. I agree, just pure age. But, like, there's nothing in the tennis that suggested that this year, I don't think. Okay. I mean, yeah, guys at their peak are competitive, but, like, that's only in there. Like, like, there's guys at, you know, on their peak and a good surface for that. And, like, like he's, like, there, there are cracks. He's beatable. But, like, everybody else has dips. He didn't have a dip this year. Yeah. I mean, I trust me, I can't argue with the pick. Um, I, that's yeah. who I would have gone with too. I just think that there are some question marks. And to me, he wasn't like a, like a consensus number one. Like I, I felt like you could have gone with some other guys who play more, for example. Um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I, I can't argue with it. Yeah. I, I think that that you're, you're hundred percent. If you want to take, say there's a concern, I'll agree. I think the biggest concern is the lack of the lack of play. Like he has to win slams. He has to win at least two slams. And then the other concern I think this year is like with the Olympics, how like will he prioritize the Olympics in terms of preparation over slams? I think he I might agree. because that's the only that's the only title he doesn't have. I agree. I agree. Um, for me, the the second pick is really tough, to be honest. Um but I think I'm I'm gonna surprise you here a little bit. I'm gonna go with Yannick Sinner. I thought you might. Uh, I just don't trust the physicality in slams. But that's the only reason at this point I think that you can argue for not going Sinner is just like can he physically get through slams? I I agree with you. There, there there's a question mark there. I just think like he's paid his dues in so many ways that like I feel like he's due for that next push. Like like and it just seems like he's doing absolutely everything in his power to make that, that step. So I, I really think 2024 is a big year. I mean, I thought the same with FAA last year and that, I, you know, I completely fell flat, but I think center is, is just a different animal in terms of just ball striking and, you know, the improvements he's made on serve and stuff. So. Yeah. I'd say there's a pretty big difference between what we were, I mean, and I, I don't think it was, I mean, we ended up having them ranked pretty similarly, in fact, we got to go back and revisit that. We'll, we'll do that. To, we'll, we'll kick off the next part with that, going yeah. back and revisiting our 2023 ranking challenge oh, yeah. and seeing how we did, because I don't even remember anymore. Yeah. I know we have it on paper somewhere. I just don't even remember. We do. Um, yeah. But, um, All right. But so yeah, anyways, your... it's, uh, yeah, I, I hear you. I, like, I think you could make a really good case if it wasn't for the, um, the, the uh, physicality issues. And it's not even just the slams, right? It's like, it's like playing a really competitive match with Mackie McDonald, like right. in one of the tournaments out in Asia, because he was just gassed after a week or two. Like, I just think that is, is I, I, I couldn't take him second. I, uh, okay. Yeah. But I go, I go again, right? Because it's a snake. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to go with Carlos Alcaraz. As number I guess, it, I guess it doesn't matter. Right. Like, and the funny part is like, I would have switched two and three, but I, I agree with the, the two picks. Like, okay. okay. Um, so with my next two, uh, I'm going to go Medvedev, mm -hmm. I think fourth. And I think that's pretty clear in my mind. I yeah. was amazing this year. I mean, Great. I actually think like, I, I think that there's a pretty clear top four, mm -hmm. but I think Medvedev's Great. a pretty easy pick. And I think that, um, like, I think Medvedev actually had an underrated year. Agreed. Totally agreed. Couldn't couldn't like, say any better. Um, yeah. I mean, if you look at the number of tournaments he won, it's like, like we forget about like the February March run where he won Dubai. Um, what are the other two he run there? He won Doha, du Rotterdam, Rotterdam, Dubai. Um, yeah. and then made finals yeah. of Indian Wells, won Miami, 
and then and one then Rome. semifinals of Wimbledon. Yeah, you know, like it's a damn good year. Finals of U.S. Open. And I think he has shown right. he can play all the surfaces. Like maybe the grass is still an issue. Like I know he made the semis of Wimbledon, but it wasn't necessarily that impressive of a run to get there. Wimbledon was a weird mm-hmm. tournament this year. Yeah. But I think with the exception of the grass, um, I, I was really impressed with him showing that he can play way better on the slower surfaces than we thought, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, he like, or he battles through it more. I think he battles through the, he, he, he battled, he didn't That's... necessarily play as well. It wasn't as impressive, but he battled his way through a lot of uh, wins on slower surfaces. And I thought that was really good. Um, I actually think Medvedev is, is equally good of a pick as Alcaraz or Sinner. I was actually thinking of going Medvedev over Alcaraz, to be honest. Like it, it was very close. Um, what I will say is I think three, four, I think two, three, four is way closer than this fifth pick. Like this fifth pick, I think is the first real pick. That's okay. like a, a debate. Okay. Um, and I think it's tough. Um, oh, man. I, I'm going to do, I'll go Rublev. Um, okay. I think part of this is a little bit of a homer pick because I really like Rublev. I mean, he's just such a like he's such a good guy and such a like a. Although a he got into a least. fight at a UTS event, did you see that he got into no a, with a, who location with some the crowd and it got like kind of out of hand. It was it was like very out of character. I'll yeah, send you the, I'll send him. you the link when I when I see it. I was yeah. kind of surprised by that, but yeah, I mean, I can't argue with that. There's, there's another guy who I would have thought about going with here. There's, there's there's two guys who I was really thinking about. I think you're going to steal my guy next, but um, but I'm hoping uh, you let him slip. So go ahead. You get six <laughs> Well, I got two picks to let him. Uh, wow, this is tough. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Sasha Zverev as number as number uh, six. Was that your pick? Yeah, that was my next pick. Um, I think I think from a tennis perspective, I think you can make a case for him over Rublev. I yep. hate, hate, hate talking about this. But I do think the domestic violence al- allegations that are out there, I think you have to factor in. I mean, like, Great. I don't think it's a I don't think it's a zero percent chance that he misses significant time due to like either court procedures or like yep. um or like I mean, if he's convicted, like I know, I know. And it, it it seems like it's a repetitive thing with him, which means, which makes me think that, like, he's guilty. The fact that it just keeps coming back to, to bite him, you know? Yeah, I mean, so I, 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 I mean, yeah, I, I, I hate speculating on that aspect of it, but I yeah. just think there's a significant, I, I, I think, and it's hard to let him slide any further because he's just such a much better player than anybody below him. Yeah. But I think that he, it's, um, it's like, but I think you have to discuss it because I think like in terms of a tennis, in terms of betting on him from a tennis perspective, like what if he misses and, and tennis isn't like other sports where like you have a significant, again, we like, we talked, we said, okay, we have, it has a little bit of an offseason, but it's only two months. Yeah. So yeah. like, and I don't know how easily the court, the court can work around. Like, if he faces a real trial yeah. I do, and I haven't heard anything about this, by the way. So I'm just speculating, but like, if he faces a real trial, I don't know how they can work around the tennis season. They can't. He's done. That's it. I mean, and he can't play weeks because it's, you know, if his if his trial is scheduled for Wednesday, you know, or if his get is if he if his trial is scheduled for like Friday and he wins the first two rounds, he's out of the tournament. That's it. You yeah. know, and he can't yeah. play. That's it's just end of story. Um as far as my next pick. This might surprise you, but it's going to be Hubie Hercatch. Yeah, I can't get down with that. You can't get down with that? I think it's a way, way, way overdraft. Um, Interesting. So my my reasoning behind it is because he's always there. He always has chances to, to, like, win tournaments. He can go out early, but with his serve and his kind of economical game, I'm not too concerned about him getting injured. Um, and I just feel like he's, he's always a tough out. So I'd rather have a guy like that than um, a guy like, 
I don't know, say Taylor Fritz, who probably has slightly more upside, but, you know, can just lose his form and not play well for a while. Or Holger Rune, who's like immature, you know, and might have a bad year. Um, so that's that's my pick there. Um, and uh, I get it. It's a great floor pick. Like, I don't mm-hmm. like I, I agree. Like, I don't like, you know, if you're if you're trying, if you just want to make sure you get somebody in the top. uh you know, in the top, who's going to be top 15 to top 20 for sure. Yeah. I think it's a great floor pick. Um, But I, I just, like, I don't know, man. I, I have a hard time seeing him, like, winning winning a slam. I have a hard time seeing him being successful on clay unless it's, you know, altitude, unless it's, like, Madrid. Like, I just think there's a, there's a, but I, I, I get it. Like, the, the, there's a good, it's a good, I think it's, like, it's high floor, but I just, I just think the ceiling's too low. Okay. All right. What are your next two picks? Um. So I think the easiest one, the, the first one's going to be Rune. I just think like, you know, even despite all the maturity issues, et cetera, this year, he did finish ranked eighth. Like, and that's despite the, the back injury, despite the, the, the maturity issues. Like, so mm-hmm. given that I can't really, I can't, I, I think he has to, like, in my mind, he has to go at this point. Um, I think an injury is, it's hard to predict injuries, but like he, he just plays a lot of tennis, like, and I think he kind of overworks himself and it just seems like he's always on the cusp of an injury and he doesn't know when to stop. I think having Becker on his team helps with that, but I, I just can't rely on his body to hold up. Oh, I completely, well, and I also think there's, there's, it's not just that, like there's also fitness issues. Like he's one of the less fit players on tour. Right. Um. So, like the com, like, and I think that's pro- that might be as big of an issue with the injuries as the other stuff we're talking about, like not being right. able to, you know, quote trust his body. So, like, I I completely hear the argument against him. I yeah. just can't. Um, I, I just go back and I'm like, okay, so all these issues existed this year. Like, why would like how are they going to get? How much worse can they get? And he's still ranked eighth. Like. Yeah, fair. I mean, he also had a really, really good start to the year. Like, you know. Um, well, well, did he? I mean, he made Aussie Open quarters, right? He made Aussie quarters. Aussie quarters. He made Wimbledon quarters. That kind of goes overlooked. But then after that, he really did nothing. And then French Open, French Open quarters as well. So he made quarters in all three slams. Like, I don't think he's going to replicate that this year. But I, well, I think, but I think there's upside to do even better, right? Like. Like, I don't, like, and, like, he also could do better in, like, the Masters 1000s and the 500s. He, like, you know yeah. what I mean? I, I think it's, like, I, I actually think where I'm getting him is, I mean, maybe the floor's a little bit lower, but I don't think the floor is much lower than top 10, top 12. Like, he's just, he's just a really good tennis player. Like, he's got all the yeah. skills. Yeah, he He's does. got a full he game, like, yeah, he does. we compare him to some of the guys on the board right now. I just think, like, the floor is too high. Okay. Um. So whose floor do you think is higher, Rune or her catch? Like ceiling, obviously it's Rune, but absolute like floor. floor, her catch. Okay, absolute floor, her catch because like, again, like I think there's a better chance Rune gets injured and like you know like there and, and misses time or is just an I mean like there's a chance that that pick I mean there's a chance with injury that that goes completely awry. I, I agree. You know what I mean? Like what I think her catch is like about the best floor pick you can get. Mm-hmm. Like, so I agree with you there. Um, but I'm, you know, but I'm going for, okay. for, um, I, I think it's worth taking a little more risk there with Rune. Mm-hmm. Um, the next, next guy I'm going to go with, and it's a guy that you hate, mm-hmm. but, uh, but I just, I mean, we're worth the ninth spot in the, in this draft. And yeah. as I look down the line, like I just don't see anybody else with more upside left. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I see one or two guys you could pick also here at this spot, but I'm gonna go Sitsipas. Oof! I know it was a rough, rough last eight months of the year. Rough <laughs> last eight months of the year, but like we were talking about as the second best player in the world in January, yeah. and like it, you know, this is this is this is like a high risk, 100. percent This is a high risk, high upside pick, mm-hmm. but I just can't see like. I mean, I can't see like anybody else who's left that has an upside close to him. It's like one of those hold your nose and make the picks, but like, okay, 
I mean, I, there's other guys I can see. Like, there's other there's other guys I can see, and I think you might steal that guy in the next two picks. But mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it'll be an interesting debate. Okay. Would you have not taken Sitsa Pasta there? I could see. I would I not. See the argument I would not. not. Yeah, I, I can see. Um. So my next two picks, you kind of have to look further on the board. Um. And I'm gonna go. The next pick is going to be Ben Shelton. That's the other, that's, that's the guy I was debating on because I think if you're looking at upside picks again, like that's another like that's another pick that could absolutely, yeah, you know the upside of there is undeniable. And that was my debate. So so you, okay. I mean, it's it's I was debating since Pastor Shelton. So that's okay. that's yeah, I can now I can now it gets really really tough. Um. And I'm debating between two guys here. Um, mm, now it, it's really tough. Now it's really tough. I'm gonna go Karen 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 Kachinov. Yeah, okay. It's an interesting, like, I was debating between Kachinov, Fritz, and Korda. Those were my three guys. And I think Korda has a slightly better upside, but I trust Kachinov to always be there and not get hurt. And he's more durable. And, like, I mean, I know he got hurt for a little bit this year, but that's kind of unlike him. And he just has that ability to grind throughout a season, you know? And that that goes a long way for me in, in a challenge like this. So that's yeah, I agree, right? Because like, yeah, I, I I see that. I think the only thing I would say is like we're going for total ranking points. Yeah, and we're looking at guys right now who last year got like two to three thousand points. You're never gonna get a zero, right? The guy's not gonna get hurt. I mean, it's highly right. unlikely you'll get a zero. So like, no matter who you pick, you can probably scrape out at least a thousand points. You'd hope, you know, if that, yeah. that's like borderline top fifty. Um, so I would prefer to go, but like the upside on Kachanov is not that bad. Like his upside as a tennis player is kind of weak, but like he has some pretty good results. Yeah. He made like, I think two straight Grand Slam semifinals. Yeah. Like he's, you know, again, like just like, it's it's amazing by how just, just, how just by being there. Yep. Just being available. Right. Yeah. Your greatest ability is your availability. That is like getting tired in the fourth set of a match. Like just, just be you know, and that, that goes a long way for me. I, it really, really does. Um, no, I mean, it makes a huge difference, right? Like on the, on the tour. Cause it's not, it's not a given. And also um, surface wise, like he's equally good on hard grass and clay. Like he's an all quarter, not, not equally good maybe, but like he can play. Whereas Casper rude, like he can only play on clay. Right. So I mean, I don't know about catching up on the grass, but. Okay. But he, but didn't, I mean, but he's in quarters. Yeah, fair. Like, I guess. I I think it's a lot of not many guys do 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 play the grass particularly well. Like we always bash guys on the grass, and then like it's a small part of the season anyway. So yeah, I I agree. I agree. All right. Um, Next two picks for you. It's really tough now. It's really really tough. It's really tough. Um, I'm gonna go back up the board. I'm gonna take another guy who we'd love to hate on, Mm -hmm. uh, Taylor Fritz. Okay. I think like so. I talked about this before, like, and this is my main mantra with Fritz. But like, there are so many American tournaments, and he just like sweeps up those American two fifties and five hundreds. But don't you think there's a time when he's gonna like not do that anymore? Like, because I feel like it's taking away from him performing his best in big events, and like now he's a perennial top top ten player. Like, I feel like he's gonna make some adjustments to his schedule. I don't think he's gonna do that as much like he played 26 tournaments this year that's a lot yeah yeah Yeah. i also think that there's some regression coming for him just with regression to what though like i mean regression i I don't i don't i mean he was like yeah why would he the one dimensional part of his game like he has you know like he doesn't do anything good besides ball striking that's it that's all he does and if he didn't have a great start to the year, like 
it, it wasn't that good. But it's all it's all winning these like small two fifty and five hundreds in America. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I'm just hoping he can sweep up like, you know, three, four titles and you know, okay. like Dallas, you know, like sweep up Dallas, Delray Beach, stuff like that. Like Okay. Fair. Fair enough. All right. What's your next pick? I mean, the second best guy in those tournaments is usually like not even in the top twenty, you know? Like you're not asking to, to beat like top guys. Yeah. Um I'm going to take another American next. I'm going to go Tommy Paul. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think he had a really underrated, really, really strong year. I also there, think that there's some regression with him coming as well. But again, like regression to what? Like Just some regre- re- regression in performance. Like, I don't think he's going to make Australian Open semis. I don't think he's going to... Um, you know, make Acapulco final again. Like, I, I just think. I mean, I think Acapulco final is reasonable. I think if you um, but yeah, I hear you. I mean, I'm looking at this. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at it. it it's uh, I I hear you. It's a little scary. It's um, scary, and with the way he kind of fa- you know uh falters in in clutch moments and matches, and like kind of people kind of I'm I'm sure players have caught on to that. I think it's going to be tough for him to replicate what's what was a great year. Like I really don't I don't think he he is where he he's ranked. Like I don't think he's the 13th best player in the world. I think he belongs more in like the 16 through 19 range. You know, more than the 10 to 13 range kind of thing, you know? Okay. So, All right. That's just my take with him. Um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting too because like I think of him as being a young player, but he actually is older mm-hmm. than a lot of the other guys ranked around him. Or he's he's around this like he's a, he's like he's equally as old as her catch. Okay. And yeah. Fritz, which surprises True. me. True. Um. So yeah, I uh, I see I see the argument. All right, my last two picks are gonna be. Sebastian Corda and Felix Oje Aliasim. Yeah, I think Aliasim. Aliasim is going to be my last pick. So you stole another pick from me there. It's mm. amazing how many of these picks we've agreed on. I know. Um, <laughs> I that just was think... going to be that was going to be my my pick at the end of the board. Felix was so um, bad this year, and I think he's better than what he showed this year. He did get injured for a little part of it, um, and he was just struggling to build that confidence back. And I think. The offseason is going to help him, and I think he's going to find his way back into the top 15, I would say. That that might be – that's a, that's a, a hypothetical over-under that we can discuss with, um, over-under ranking of 15 for FAA. I think that's an interesting one. So, um, but, yeah, that's those are my last two picks. Corda, I just think he has a lot of upside. Um, I mean, everyone thinks he does. I am – more down on Corda than probably a lot of the other people are just because he's not that strong on serve. And I think his forehand needs a lot of work. Um, I don't think he's as good as people make him out to be, but um, he's, he should be in the top 16 in the world. If you're thinking about like this challenge. So um, I think he belongs to uh, deserves to be in my team. Um, Who's your last pick? So it's tough here. I got a lot of guys I'm looking at. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, Demonor's an interesting look here, just because again, like he's like, he's another guy like catching off, who's just like you know when pre- like uh, what is it? Luck is when preparation meets uh, meets opportunity. Yep. Um, Casper Rude hasn't been taken. Yeah, I, I can't go rude. Like, the problem is he only had twenty eight hundred points this year, and that includes a French Open final, which is twelve. Like if he can't, if he can't rack up, I mean, he's just not going to do anything on anything that's not a, a clay court. I agree. And if he doesn't have a run at the French Open, you're done. Um, right. I think Tiafo is an interesting look if you could get through a season healthy. Like the upside is definitely there. Um, yeah, mentally he's too up and down as well. Yeah, well, it's energy, right? It's just it's just energy level. Like, yeah. part of me says I should hedge and go fees <laughs> as my last spot. That's this hilarious. Hedge against, 
partially as a hedge against our top 10 bet, but also like I don't know, man. That's like amazing. He, he's got a lot of uh like if you're looking for a guy who's got talent and, and can do it on all surfaces. Um I think it really comes down to Demonor versus for me, it comes down to Demonor versus Tiafo. Okay. And it's really tough. Um that is tough. I'll go Fo. I mean, he there's okay. enough tournaments in America that if he can scratch out like you know, again, if he can scratch out like some solid two fifty five hundred performances. And the chances that he makes a deep run at a, a slam are way higher than Demonors. Yeah, yeah. So I think that that's a smart pick. Um, Is that who you would have taken there? Probably, yeah. Yeah. But I do think Fees is like, if you're looking for a young guy, I, 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 if you were looking for a, just a pure upside, I think Fees would have been a fun pick. It would have been. Bublik also would have been a fun pick, but you know he's just going to clown away so many tournaments. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Demonor would have been my next pick, probably, if yeah. I had another one. Um, and probably probably Ugo Wambear would be the pick after that, to be honest. Okay. All right. I can see that. I can see that. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe Rude kind of makes the list at this point, too. Yeah, I think at some point Rude has to go, yeah. like, there's a lot of interesting. I mean, look, there's a lot of interesting picks, right? Like, right. Um, I think I think Sarundalo is an underrated guy. Like, it's hard to take him in this kind of draft. I think his upside is a little bit limited, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, but but if he plays the Golden Swing, like he should rack up points there. I'm not sure if Alcaraz will or not this year. I could, I could see him not if he plays Australia. Probably not. Yeah. You know what I mean? It seems like most of the top guys do the hardcore swing in Europe instead, and I could see him staying over in Europe. Um. I mean, he might play Acapulco, Alcaraz. Yeah, I'm talking about the, the true golden swing, right? Like the oh. true, like, South America. Like, yeah, he used that as a way to get those... back from injury. What? Alcaraz used that as a way to get back from injury. That's why. Yeah, he... exactly. That's my point. So, if, like, if Sarundalo, like, Sarundalo could be the, t- if he plays all those golden swing tournaments, he could be the top guy down there in, in every single Good. one of those tournaments. He could. Because if you look at the other, the rest of the top 20, I don't know that anybody else is going to go gold, go golden swing. Rude might, just because of how bad this past year was. I don't know what his schedule looks like. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, he'll play some for sure. You know, it would be smart for him to go down there and rack up some points. He's the 250 king, right? But when clay, right? Like he, like he's way better on yeah. clay. And then right. those are way weaker fields. If, you, if you're looking to get confidence and looking to get points, those that's that's a much better place to do it. Yeah. Um. All right. So that does it for our for our 2024 teams. Um, so my squad is Djokovic, Medvedev, Rublev, Sitsipas, Rune, Fritz, Demonor, no, and Tommy Fritz Paul. Paul. No, no, sorry, not Demonor. Tommy Paul and Tiafo. I took Tiafo yep. last. My team is Sinner, Alcaraz, Zverev, Herkatch, Shelton, Kachanov, Korda, and FAA. So yeah. Interesting. So we're counting ranking points, but there are no ranking points for Olympics. So how are we going to calculate, add that tournament in? Let's add Olympics as a equal to world tour finals. Actually, no, we can't, we can't do that. Let's, let's, right. let's count Olympics as a, um, as a master's 1000. Okay. Same point structure, same point structure. And I think, I think how many is it? What, how, how deep is the Olympics field? 64, 64. So we can, yes, then it makes, it makes sense. We can play it as a normal, you know, as like a same, same ranking structure as Monte Carlo. Okay. Does that, do any other tournaments have just 64? Uh, I think Monte oh, Carlo Paris is actually does. 56. Paris too. Paris too, yeah. Paris, Paris and Monte Carlo are 56. Everything else now is 96, right? Right. right. Okay. So same point structure as a Masters 1000. Yeah. That's, that's fair. Um. All right. I like it. I like it. So let's move on to our next segment, um, which is going to be hypothetical over-unders. Yeah. So this is going to be, I, I like this. Um, so let's start with, um, you want to start with top guys or kind of uh, lower rank guys? I think let's start with, let, let's start with guys who weren't involved in the fantasy draft. Cause we talked through those guys quite okay. a bit. Okay. Um, sounds good. Let's start with Davidovich Fokina. So 
Um, will or will not win an ATP title in 2024? What would you set the line at will win? And what would you set the line at will not win? So what I'm trying to look at for Fokina is like, how many events does he play? Because I feel like you don't see his name much. I guess he played 25 tournaments this past year. He so play like, he plays plenty of tournaments. It's just like, um, I think I would go with. I think this is pretty close to like pretty close to break even. I would go mm-hmm. with like minus one thirty to win a title, plus one ten to not win a title. Well, he didn't win a title this year, and you know how. No, he but you see, but like I, I don't know. I feel like. I feel like over under 1.5 title or over under 0.5 title is a pretty good bet if you're a top 30 guy. I think he's pretty clearly mm-hmm. a top 30 guy. I like I want to think of him as higher because of his talent, but like, ugh, I don't Mental know, man. Problems. And, and, you know, it's not like he's 19 or 20 like fees. Like he's 24. You know what I mean? I mean, he's... Right. He's only a year younger than Sarundalo. He's only a year younger than Umber. He's older than Corda. Like, it's not, you know what I mean? Like, he's not, like, and it's not like it's his first year on tour. Like, I think he was, I mean, he basically went nowhere this year, right? Versus where he finished 22. Yeah, but you've seen signs of promise. Like, when he played Djokovic at the French, right? When he played. No, the- I, I agree, man. Like, like, I that that's why I think, so like, upside. I think I'd go, like, minus 130 plus 110 to win a title. And I would probably take the yes, but man, it's uh, yeah, I'd I don't know. I'd flip flop it, I um just because he made no semis this year, or no, he was zero and one in semis, and he got destroyed by Demonor. Remember that? So I think as he, has, that that's the other problem is he just played some awful, awful matches. You froze for a little bit. Yeah, I think I'm back, right? Okay, you're back. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, um, you were saying he just he plays some awful matches. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's that's the issue with him. But and the reason why I would flip flop it is because his biggest problem is the mental side of the game. And he's shown that as he gets to the business end of of uh tournaments, he's he he can freeze and he can play those duds like he did against Demon. Like that was the furthest he got in the tournament this year, and he played a complete dud. In quarterfinals, yeah, I actually think the bigger problem is he plays a really strong, strong. He, he played a really strong schedule. Like if you look at the schedule he played last year, he played Adelaide, Australian Open, Montpellier, Rotterdam, Dubai, Doha, Indian Wells, Miami, Estoril, Monte Carlo, Barcelona. I'll just go through the, the small tournaments, but uh, five hundred and two fifty. He played Adelaide, Montpellier, um, Rotterdam, Doha, Dubai. Estoril, Barcelona, Queens Club, Mallorca, Bastad, Hamburg, Beijing. Like that's a really, really, oh, really scary. that's an incredibly strong schedule. There's that's like true. the only like the only week, there's a couple of weaker terms, like maybe Bastad's a little weaker, even if I wouldn't even call that weak. Um maybe maybe you could say um I was gonna say maybe you could say Estoril's a little bit weaker. Um, but I, like I actually a lot think of those for, tournaments. I think for his career, I think it would benefit him if he would actually make his schedule a bit little a little weaker and play more two fifties. I actually think it yeah. would be better for his career and like get a tournament under your belt and and then kind of work from there because I don't know. I just think his mental problems are just too alarming, which is why I would flip it. I would give it plus 130 to to win one and minus 110 to not. Yeah. But. Yeah, I hear you. And and is and again, it's not like he's an American where he's playing in like like a whole bunch of I think the schedule is a huge piece of it. So, I think you might be right, Manny. I think you might have you might be you might be winning this one. Like this one might be I might okay. have to go with you cuz I think that like yeah, I think you're right. Like it's the schedule is just alarming to me. Like it's you know, there's it's it's uh if he played Golden Swing or if he played like easier events, but 
I mean, maybe he will. I don't, I don't know, but we, we, we have to go based on what he's done in the past. Right. Well, yes and no. Right. I mean, it's also based on like the upside you see, et cetera. Um, yeah. but yeah, I go back to the schedule. I think the schedule is going to make it really like if he plays a brutal schedule again, I think it's going to make it mm-hmm. tough. Um, all right. So let's move on to the next one. Um, Dimitrov over under one and a half titles in 2024. I'd go, under. I'd go but, under. Well, no, no I'm, I'm telling you to set the line. Oh, set the line. Okay, at one and a half. Um, I'd put the over at like plus one, I don't know, 40 maybe, under at like minus 165, minus 170. Like, oh. yeah, I just, I mean, I don't know, man. Like, it was a nice resurgence from him, but like, it was a nice resurgence, but like, what makes you think like he can keep it up? Like, I mean, he, you know, he's, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm not high on Dimitrov this year. And I don't know, that might be a little bit of a, of a bad take, but, um, um, I, I don't think you can say that given what he did at the end of the year this year, like he had a damn good year. 43 and 21. He's ranked 14. Um, I know he's had a tough time kind of backing up a good year with another good year. That's kind of been a trouble for him in, in the past. So I get where you're going there. This year, no titles this year, though. No titles this year. Two finals, Paris Masters and Geneva. Yep. Um, another guy who played a really strong schedule. Yep. He played I mean, six a few semis. Geneva is a little bit weaker. Um, Sheng Du is a little bit weaker. Um, but another guy who plays just a really strong schedule, which again is what makes me think like, and for him, like, is really is is like vulturing titles really exciting? True. And like, you know, like for Fokina, it's a different story, right? Because he's like he hasn't won a title. Like he would benefit from playing some two fifties and just winning a trophy. Yeah. Whereas Dimitrov, like he's been a top three player. You know, he's made semis. I also don't know if you're Dimitrov. Like you've made a ton of money. Like, yeah. you know, I don't. I don't really know. Like, like the motivation's got to be a. You love the game, and b. Like, true. You want to like um and, and like doing well in big tournaments. Like, I, I can't see the motivation being like, I want to go out there and like accumulate ranking points. Right. So what, what, what would you say at over under half a 500? Would you make that a pick em? No. I mean, because like, there's just not that many 500s. Okay. Right. Like how many 500s did he play last year? He played Beijing's a 500, Washington, Queens Club. Barcelona, Rotterdam, Rotterdam. So that's five, five tournaments. And you're asking to win one out of five pretty tough tournaments. That seems like a tough ass. It's a tough ass. True. Okay. Vienna is another one. I forgot Vienna is a 500. Yeah. I mean, like, look, there's a couple that you'd have a chance at, but like the 500s tend to draw decent fields though. They do. But like Washington is at the same time as the Olympics this year. Right. So like, yeah, but he'll play Olympics, right? Dimitri, uh, because he's Olympics. one of the top yeah, Bulgaria, right? Like he, yeah, it's not like America where he has to compete for spots. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, true. He'll play there. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to, Oh, so what, what would I say to that? I'd yeah. probably agree with you, but I'd probably go slightly less, uh, on the under, I'd probably go, I would say, minus 130 on the under. And okay. Yeah, so slightly more high on Dimitrov. But uh, uh, Echeverry, same same thing. Over, under, one and a half ATP titles in, 2000, in 2024. I was impressed with him at, at the end of the year in Basel. Remember that? Yeah, I... <laughs> That third set tiebreak against Holger Rune when he lost. This is tough. Line. I mean, I think this is the right line. I think one and a half cuddles is the right line. So this is a funky one in that, like, this is kind of the opposite of Dimitrov. Because, like, 
Yeah. I'm assuming being Argentinian, he would go play the the golden swing again. And if he does that, like those are just weaker tournaments, right? So he's got to he's got to like like if he goes and plays golden swing, is he the second best player on that swing? Probably. Maybe third, maybe one top guy plays it, but like he's probably this yeah. like you know what I mean? So he like you would think he he could you or and then that that would be at least Buenos Aires would be at home. Cordoba would be at home in his home country. Mm-hmm. So he's got a chance to scrape one out there. This is tough because it's also like the other bet here is like, is he gonna play as many of these like lower? Uh, oh, I think he will. Did he win a title this year? No, he made a few finals, but I don't think he won one. Yeah, I know he made Houston final. Hugh, okay, he only made two: Houston and Santiago. Okay. Um. Lost close. Yeah, matches. I, I, um, I'd probably go the under here. Well, what, what, would, go well, what would you here, set? What would you close. set the line at? Um, probably minus. I put the under at like a minus 150 over at plus 120. Okay. See, I would make it a pure pick em. Because like he made two finals, but I think he's due for improvement. Like yeah. So this is he's like closer. So yeah, this is, so this is interesting because it's like, I like the player. Um, yeah. I like the player, but I mean, but it's it's interesting because if you just look like if you just take a step back and look at his year, his record was only thirty two and twenty seven. Interesting, but they do say if you play a tough schedule, going five hundred in Masters one thousands is pretty good. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Like, I mean, that, that is like a top. Yeah. I mean that, yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Um, like I, this is, this is more of like a, a like the player. Um, mm-hmm. but it's hard to win masters 1000 or it's, it's hard to win. You know, it's, it's, this is just like, it's hard to win, hard to win all those matches in a row. Yeah. And, and winning, I mean, like, like, he, I think we're going to know by the end of Feb. Because he really needs a title in Golden Swing to make this. Like, if he gets a title in Golden Swing, and then if he plays a few weaker events on clay, yeah, in like the you know between like March and July, I think he's got a shot. Um, but you you really need him to get a title, I think, in Golden Swing. I'm assuming he'll play it again. Mm-hmm. Um, let's transit. I I would make it a pick them, but I, I don't know. I, I hope he wins over a half a title. I like, I like the player too. Like I, I like him. Um, I was super impressed with his indoor swing, like, and the improvements he made on hard court at the end of the year. Yeah. Oh, I a hundred percent agree. Like love the player. Love the player. Yeah. Just, uh, just it's it's just hard to win a title and a half. Like it's just you it know is. what I mean? And, and yeah, that's that's all it is. It's really but, just like like there are top twenty guys that don't get there. You know what I mean? And like it's right. you, know, you know, so that's, well, that's Baez the always gets there. Yeah, Baez does. But, but Baez, but Baez, right? You're looking at, again like schedule, right? Like he vultures he vultures two fifties. Yeah, true. But I I would I mean would you think Baez has more titles this year or Etch has more titles this year? I guess Baez just on track record, but like. I mean, I go Baez because I think he, like, so I think there's, like, so Etch is a better player. Yeah. But there's two advantages for Baez. A, he's, like, he's, st- I think he still is a better clay quarter, like, or a or, or better yeah. slow clay quarter. And then, like, I think he'll play, be, and he also will, because he has to, he'll play a ton more, like, weaker slay, cl- cl- like, slow clay events, right? Like, this is an interesting one where, like, if you were going to ask me ranking points, I'd be a lot higher on Etch. But mm-hmm. I just think, like, winning titles is, like, a tough measure for him. Okay. okay. So I think, like, I think actually, so, like, where do you think his ranking will end up? I think he'll be... Like, over under top 25. I go slightly over. Meaning inside uh, the top 25. Yeah, slightly, slightly under. So slightly better than 25. 
Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think twenty is probably a good. I think twenty is a good, a good like you know goal for him. Yeah, yeah, right. like fifteen. Fifteen would probably be a good goal yeah. for him. I think he'll end up like. I'd probably put the over under somewhere around twenty. Man, he showed so much improvement. He did, yeah. So again, like I love the player. I just yeah. don't think he's like a title winner, if you will. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, next guy, I guess we could do the 1.5 ATP titles again. Let's do it for Demonor. Cause he's another guy that plays a lot. Um, and he's always there. Right. So like, as you say, it's, uh, what was it? The quote, I always forget it. Opportunity meets. Yeah. I think, uh, when, uh luck preparation, is when preparation meets, meets opportunity. opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. He's the ultimate guy there. Right. So it's like in a 250 when someone might be feeling tired and just like, ah, oh, I don't what why am I here? Like he might take advantage of that. Yeah. Know? Yeah. So I agree. Um I'm looking at something. I'm trying to look up his record in finals for his career. Mm-hmm. Cause I feel like he plays pretty well in finals. But that could just be a myth. He has seven career titles. Yeah, he only had one last year, just Acapulco. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Four finals last year, but just Acapulco is a title. Um, but he made final of uh, Queens. He made final of Los Cabos. And he made final of uh, Canada, Toronto. Yeah, it's just the only one where I think he really had a shot was Los Cabos. And I know Sitsipas killed him, like that was more of a matchup thing. But in terms of, like the only yeah. like of those tournaments, like I don't think he was like it's you know, like asking him, and that's the problem, right? Is like he's another guy who like ranking points is so much such a better like measure than titles. Because yeah. he's just not like a good titles winner. Right, but he's gonna um, play his share of two fifties, right? And he's always gonna be there. And like if he um, plays a weak field, like he's you know. He's a threat for that title. So I'd put this at Pickham this year. He really doesn't play a share of 250s, though. Again, his like smaller mm-hmm. tournament schedule this year was um Rotterdam, Marseille, Acapulco, Barcelona, Den Bosch, which is a little bit weaker, Queens, Atlanta, Los Cabos, Beijing, Tokyo, Basel. Like, that's not that weak. Yeah, that's not that weak. It's true. Yeah, and he got, he lucked out with a really easy draw on Acapulco. So, what would you put his over under in ranking, Demonor, this year? He ended this year at 13, which I think is kind of high for him, to be honest. Like, I think he's going to be a bit lower. I, I would put it at like 16 or 17. Like a pick them over under on ranking. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I think I think that's the right. Long, I I think I think somewhere around like between fifteen and twenty is a good pick them on ranking for him. Like he'll be there. It's just again, like it's tough to see him making Masters finals. It's tough to see him winning. Like you know, winning, okay. you know, winning a five hundred is, is a tough ask for him. Although he's done it, I think he did. I think he did it in twenty two. Is he won a tournament twenty two as well? Yeah, I think for the under over under one point five titles, I I think I'd go under here also. Like it, it's just really hard. Like I don't know, it's just titles such a tough stat because yeah, like there is. will be a couple of titles that somebody's gonna win, like somebody random. But it's just tough to say who and like again, it's another guy that just doesn't play like these weak fields, you know. So you'd put the under at like minus one forty, at least minus one thirty, if not higher, like. Again, I just think like I think titles is like the wrong measure for him. Okay. Okay. Um, this is an interesting one. Uh Nadal over under 35 matches played in 24. I'm going way under. Okay. So what um, would you set what would you set the line at? I think 20. Well, so what would you said the over like over would be like plus two fifty? Maybe like plus one. So yeah, I think I think one. Yeah, I think I think something like that. Yeah, because like I just think like 
So in order for him to play 35 matches, right? I think a lot has to go right. I think he has to stay relatively healthy. I don't mm-hmm. think that's a given. No. I think he has to um he has to play relatively well. Like he has to advance like relatively cuz I don't think he's going to play 20 tournaments. No. Like I think he'll play 15 max if he stays healthy. He'll play Brisbane Australian Open. And then I think he's probably going to play. He might play Acapulco if he feels up to it, but he's probably going to not and just play. I mean, I, I mean, I'm thinking like just broader, right? Like he'll play four slams, right? If he can, if he's healthy, right? Four he's slams. Healthy. Um, he needs put him to down play for like six masters. I think he'll skip a few masters, but can he play 20 matches in the clay court season? Like that, Maybe. that was when I was like making this up, like, I was thinking if he can play 20 matches in the clay courts season between Monte Carlo, Barcelona, Madrid, Rome, and the French, then he only has to play 15 matches elsewhere to reach that total. Right. So like, I completely agree. He could get there. I don't think it's a ridiculous, like I said, way under right away. Okay. I don't think it's a ridiculous line. Uh-huh. I just think like a lot has to go right for him to get there. Right. Again, like I said, he has to a, like, he has to stay healthy. Mm-hmm. He has to play, and then he has to play. He doesn't necessarily play that well and win a lot of matches, but he has to play well enough to not get discouraged. And like, if he comes back and he's, um, if he comes back and he's like winning like half his matches, if he goes like five and five in his first five, his first ten matches. Mm-hmm. Is like, is he going to get discouraged and be like, you know what? Like, why am I doing this? Well, I don't think you can really say getting discouraged with Nadal is kind of a, a thing he does. Like, he understands the process. He's come back from these kind of injuries so much. No, times. but he's never been, but he's it's never been like this. Like, he's had injuries, but it's never been, like, if he, like, he's never come back from an injury and, like, had three months where he looks like he's, like, top 30 in the world. Like I'm saying, what if he comes back and he's and he's not showing that he's like even like reasonably like within being within the top thirty, top fifty? He's talked about how many injuries he's had in the past. Like, like if you're if he for Nadal, like why play? Right, the reason to play okay. is to play in big matches and win slams. Right, like that's got to be because like what else? Like if you're Nadal, what else is there? Like nobody's yeah. gonna nobody's gonna care if you if you're Rafa. Nobody's gonna care if you make you know. If you win two ATP titles, finish 18th in the world, and yeah. you know make 1.3 million of prize money, like no, I, you know, like, right. it's not going to get anybody excited. So, I mean, like, he plays for the love of competing, and he's done it so many times that it makes me kind of believe that if he's coming back, he's he's going to play top 20 tennis. You know that that that's, that's my point. Is like I think like if he can't, if he if he's if he's if he's not playing at that level, yeah. He might just retire at the French. Cause like if he can't, if he can't play top, if he can't play top 10 tennis, why play? So what what's your expectation for him this year? I, I think like I, that's why I said in the beginning, I don't think it's a bad line. Like I have yeah. no idea. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. But I just think there's a lot that has to go right in order for him to play a full year. Like I think he has to stay healthy or at least moderately healthy. He has to play well enough to not get discouraged. And he has to like decide that it's he can like that he can and he, and he also has to play well enough to like rack up matches. Right? Like like if he can't like like what if he what if he's not top twenty in the world on clay anymore? Or what if he's borderline top twenty in the world on clay? Yeah. And he only plays tough. like true. fifteen matches well, on the clay because he doesn't like, the last time we saw Nadal, like at the end of 2022 and like the first two tournaments of 2023, like he, well, he didn't play a warm up event. He just played Australia, but like or he just played the Australian Open, but he was 500 and he was like struggling to win matches. Like, remember yeah. the uh, United Cup? Like, he struggled to win matches, period. Yeah. So, um, you know, it took, it took him four sets to beat Draper and then he lost to Mackie McDonald. Like, it was a bad end to the year. He lost to Tommy Paul in Paris, you know, couldn't win a match at the world tour finals. Like he was struggling to win matches period. 
So I don't know how much better he's going to be than that. Um, but it, it's tough. It's it's really tough to say, but like. Because you have to I, like 35 is not a lot of matches. Yeah. So my over under was plus 150 for the over and minus 130 for the under. So I, okay. I think there's a slightly better chance he gets there. But I look, I hear you because like there, there's a path. Right. Yeah. I just think like I'm just going through it and I'm asking myself, like, man, like, can enough go right to get in there? Mm-hmm. Cause again, this is like, you know, yeah, he's just like Yeah. He's not gonna play 25 tournaments. No, he's not. He's not. But if he can play 20 at the in the clay court sw- swing, right? Matches, like, yeah. Make semis yeah. of of uh, the French would be which would be six matches, and then like play like three in Madrid, three in Rome three in bar two in Barcelona and like three in Monte Carlo or something like that. He gets to 20. Then he only needs 15 elsewhere. Like, I don't know. I was going to play that. Madrid and Rome. Like, that's the thing. Like, will he really play? Like, right. I'll probably, probably skip probably one of those. Madrid. Yeah. True. Right. Like true. And again, it's all seems like, and, and, and you've laid out a path to 35 matches. No doubt. Like he a hundred percent could get there. Yeah. But like, if he gets hurt, you're donezo. If he decides midway through the year, he's got to retire because he just can't play it well enough anymore. Doesn't want to, you know, like done, yeah. like, like, you know, like, like if he comes back and he's playing top 10 level tennis, which is what I think we all hope because it would just be fun for the right. game. Like then, yeah, he'll, he'll hit your over easily. Mm-hmm. But if he's not doing, if he's not healthy and if he can't, if he can't play at a high level, very good chance he doesn't get there. So. Well, that's why these are these are hypothetical over unders, and like if if this was an actual line on a sports book, a book's I- never offering this line. It's just way too like it, yeah. it, it's such a hard line to put out there, like because it's, it's it's like yeah, any over under here would be tough because like it's just there's so much variance yeah. here. All right, next one is quite interesting. I'm wondering what you'll set the line at here. Rude to win over or under half a title outside of clay in 2024. Has Rude ever won a title outside of clay? Well, he made U.S. Open final. <laughs> Does that count for anything? <laughs> he made uh, Montreal semifinal, or, yeah, I think semifinal? Two years ago? Yeah. So he's never made a final. Wait, that can't be true. Oh, no, that's that's that's, that's this year he didn't make. This year... He made one quarter on hard, and that was his best result. Was Beijing quarter? Um, yeah, it it was, it was a bit of a disaster. Um, mm-hmm. For his career, he has one hard court title: twenty twenty one San Diego. Which I had completely forgotten. I had to look it up. I don't, yeah. you know, I couldn't. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not remembering 2021 San Diego. That's but he not did kind of make Miami course. final in 2022 as well. And the mat, you know, lost to Alcaraz in that final. Made the U.S. Open final, lost to Alcaraz, and made the. World yeah, I mean, there are final slower, final. there are slower hard courts out there, right? Yeah. Um, that he could do okay on, like an Acapulco, or Los Cabos. But he's gotten um, worse in hard since 2022. To be honest, what he's gotten worse on hard court, not better. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, um what would you set that line at? I think you gotta go under. I think you gotta go under. I think well, it's gotta whether, be like I would go under too, but what would you set the line at of I over? think like minus two fifty or something. Under is minus two fifty, and what would the over over would be like plus, plus two hundred. If it's that if that's the line, I would be tempted to go over. I mean, like, what, like, what makes you say he can win a title on on hard court? It's just the fact that he made Miami and U.S. Open final. Like, I, I, those are like tough events. I know he didn't have great, uh, tough draws in those events, but like, he's shown some promise you know, in his career. And I feel like if he has a better year. The- well, I mean, I guess, I guess, right. Like going back, right. Like, I think this is the thing to say, like, I'm saying it's a one out of three chance. I'm not saying he can't do it. Yeah. I'm just saying, I think it's one out of three likely or something or one out of 3.2 or whatever. Right. But like, I'm not saying he can't do it. Yeah. And I'm saying like, I just, I, I just, yeah, I think it's, I think, you know, three out of 10, he gets that. You know what I mean? I think most of it, like, 
Yeah, I don't I don't think it's super likely. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. You want to touch on some guys that we had in our fantasy team? So I've got a couple others I wanted to do actually. Okay, uh, sure. Yeah, you Adrian go Monterino okay. over under uh ranked 40th in the world next year. Ooh. Um, and I went, I think he's a prime regression candidate. I agree. I agree. But I still think he ends up in the top 30. Um, so for 40, I'd probably go over minus one or like better than 40. I would go minus 135. And then under, I'd probably go or like worse than top 40, I'd go plus 120. That's where I think the line should be set. Okay. I think he should land probably in the 35 range. Okay. Like Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I... He's not 22. Like, I think 13 spots of regression is accurate for him. Like, he's not going to win three titles and... Yeah, my challenge is that before this year, like the highest he had gotten since 2018 was 30, it was in like the mid 30s. And that's where he belongs. I I, I think I would, I would set this line closer to even money because like, okay. like, so as a tennis player, I agree he probably belongs somewhere in the mid 30s. Mm-hmm. But that's not giving a whole lot of room to injury age catching up with him mm-hmm. you know what i mean so there's, there's like there's a lot there's just a lot of risk yeah, factors for, here for a guy who's 35 damn, to... good, damn good season in 2023 though like oh i know i know and that's why i, I kind of want to discuss this busy it, it yeah. like damn good season but also even looking statistically i think he's a prime regression candidate like he won yeah like i think um but age catching up to him i i don't know he plays such an economical uh, style of tennis that is not really a physical brand of tennis, right? So I know, I, I know, I, can... I think there's, yeah, he's in terms of injury, in terms of all these other risks, yeah. like he's definitely lower on the scale, but it's just like yeah. at some point, age catches up with everyone, right? And like, uh, yeah. it's also because he's got a weird style. Um, my concern would be with him is like, what if he can't practice enough, right? To like stay, to like kind mm-hmm. of stick with that style. So, yeah, I think I think 40s pretty close. Like I, I think I would go pretty close to a plus 110 minus 110 on I might go like minus 120 plus 100 from actually to be like to be worse than 40. So being worse than 40 being like a minus 120. Oh, interesting. Okay. So minus you think that there's yeah. like significant regression here? Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you look he his um yeah, I mean like so I think like you hit it pretty much on the head with um uh, so with, with your comment about him being probably like his his true skill level for last year being yeah. like somewhere in the mid 30s but then again you have age that was with him being healthy all year which is it's a risk for any player yeah and then he also he's he's a zero on clay right it's a good point he's an absolute and zero. so I, not even clay any slower um, surface yeah unless there's altitude where the the serve can play up a little bit like and he he's won an absolute, he didn't win Den Bosch, right? Uh, but he won Mallorca, I think. And he won Newport. Right? Yeah, he won and Newport he, for sure. And he yeah. won Stockholm, I think, on top of it. So he's won three events. So, you know, he's not going to defend all three titles, right? So there's going to be... And that's, that's the other problem, right? Like, he's 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 so dependent on, like, a few... He needs a few big results. Because, again, the slower surface is a complete zero. Yeah. And it's not just clay. It's he, if, if he plays... Indian Wells, zero. Acapulco, zero. You know, Miami's probably a zero. I I think she might have done okay in Miami last year. But, like, Mm -hmm. still, I I have a hard time seeing him do well there. Like, there's just a lot of – you just – yeah, there's – it's it's a tough road. Like, there's a road there to to grinding out something in the mid-30s, but it's a tough road. Well, he's in the top 25 now. So, he's 22 in the world, which is, like – he also won Sophia. So – 
you know, after yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember. Matches, yeah, Sophia right? is the one that I remember because I, uh, yeah. I had the features on, and Astana. Astana. Well, I met, mixed up Stockholm and Astana. So, okay. Yeah, it was Astana. yeah, Sophia, Astana, Newport, final of Mallorca. You lost to Eubanks. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, so three titles last year, but still, like, to what you said before, that's a lot to back up. That is a lot to back up. They, now, they were all 250s, but still, like... You can gain some points in maybe, like, a Delray Beach or, you know... Uh... I don't know a Dallas, for example, where he made quarters. He could potentially. Yeah. I also think he didn't do very well at the Australian Open last year, so he can actually gain some points there. He lost in the second round to Demonor. Oh, I don't know how much better he's going to do than that, though. He's not really yeah. a slams guy oh. at this age, you know. Yeah, he, is he doesn't good. recover, and he doesn't play the long matches as well. I think that's good a good point. It's tough, man, because like to make. I mean, he could maybe make it one more round. And pick up like 45 points, but he's not making like a quarters run. Yeah, right. True. It's an interesting guy to discuss, though. Very interesting guy. It's a good yeah. one. Yeah. What's your next Yeah, one? he he had to come up on the pod somewhere. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Um another guy while we're talking about guys in the in the same regression candidates, Jan Leonard Struff. Huge regression candidate. Huge. I think the match point nine guys touched on it too. Like, like does he would... does he make top fifty next year? I would have to go under or worse than top 50. Yeah, I would too. I would too. Um, Same with Eubanks, to be honest. Yeah, oh, Eubanks for sure. Eubanks, Eubanks for sure. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's out of the top 75 at the end of next year. Like if I got plus money odds on him to be out of the top 75, I'd hit that in a heartbeat. Um, I don't know that I would. I'd have to think about it. And the reason why I say that is like – because he's ranked well, he's going to get good draws and he's going to get like seated in events. Um, I, I also think the fifth in the world last year was Taro Danny with 700 points. But injuries are a huge concern with Eubanks with just that like lanky frame. Like, I think it's, I, I don't know. I just don't trust him. And just like, it just felt like he caught fire at certain points. Also, Wimbledon quarterfinal, like that, that's not going to be replicated. He's going to lose a ton of points. Oh, regression candidate Manny, 100%. Yeah. No, no doubt. Okay. I'm looking at again, 75th in the world last year was Taro Daniel with 700 points. That doesn't feel like a lot for Eubanks to straight, scrape together if he plays a full year. Mm. I and don't think he's going to play a full year, too, to be honest. That's, that's, that's my other point. Like, he likes commentating. You know, I, I don't know. I, I felt like he played a lot because he was having so much success. Like, and if he doesn't have that success, I don't think he's going to play quite as much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, look, I hear you. I hear you. But, uh, I just, I look at it and like 700 points, man. If he can like, like a two, you know, if he can scrape out, like, I don't know. Like it does, it, it seems like he, you know, if he can play, Again, 15, 20 tournaments, that's not even a full year. And you can scrape out, like, 30 points a tournament. I mean, like, what if you win one match in a 250, what do you get? Like, 25 points or something? You know what I mean? Like, it's – but, you know, like, like I think it's – it's interesting. Lance, I agree with you. Major regression candidate in terms of, like, tennis skills. But, mm -hmm. like, it's really hard to drop out of the top 75 once you're in. Like, there's just such a bias towards players, like – you know, if you're in, you get points just for, you know, if you win one round. Like, I don't know, like Rusevori is 69. Rinky is 71. Monfils is 74. I mean, like, It's not about, is he a better player? It's just like, can he like, again, this is about like, just can he scrape out points? Can he make one run on grass? Or in an American hard, he's How also an American, right? So there's a ton of like weaker American hardcore events to play in. How many points does he have now? Twelve thirty-five. So he'd need so minus two, minus five hundred, basically, and he'd be out of the top seventy-five. Yeah. Right. So he won in Mallorca. That's great. You you could scrap maybe a hundred off of the Mallorca win. You could scrap probably at least right. That's if he just misses, doesn't make right. the if he just misses the final. So scrap three yeah, you can four hundred off of Wimbledon, and that's being generous, right? No, because he only got three sixty. Oh, three six. Okay, so scrap one, scrap two hundred, three hundred, scrap two hundred, three hundred, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Two fifty. Like 
And then from the Miami quarterfinal run, you can scrap another 150. But then he's not going to make a run to another, like, he's not going to make a run on one of the weaker. Like, I don't think remember, so. he wasn't. He 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 wasn't even ranked high enough to play any of, the, of like the weaker heart of like the Delray Beach Dallas type tournaments. Okay. He was pretty gassed out after Wimbledon. Like, I don't know. I think like I think fifty is probably a fair line. Like mm, again, it's just like I go you know, at some okay, point, maybe like, not seventy five. I go sixty five. But if I got plus money for him to be out of seventy five, like if I got plus two hundred or two fifty. Out of the top 75, I'd hit it. I'd hit it in a heartbeat. Uh, I hear the tennis take. The tennis take makes a lot of sense. My take is more of like a, you know, I don't know. It's, it's just a question of like, can he scrape enough points together? What about Struff? Like he made my uh, Madrid final. Yeah, so I'm a lot lower on Struff because Struff played 20. Well, I guess, but he played a ton of challengers. So like he's probably like, I think he's probably similar to Eubanks. The only advantage with Struff is he's probably a little better at like the movement on clay. Yeah. Like he's not good at it, but he's, I think he's better. Like in your altitude clay tournaments, he'll probably play more of those and be more of a threat than Eubanks. He's 20 um, in the world now. That's insane to me. Struff. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I'd hit out of the top 50 for sure with him. If I got plus 200 on him being out of the top 60, I'd hit it. I think two, I think 50 is a fair thing. Like, so we talked about the negative, but he did miss a bunch of time with an injury, which has, I think, been a problem for him throughout his career. But he did miss a bunch. Like, if he can stay healthy, right? If he if he, 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 he won't miss three. He didn't play from high until Zhuhai. So he missed the entire... He missed Wimbledon in the entire hard court, in half the hard court. But besides Madrid final, what was his? what were his good results? Stuttgart final. Okay. Lost to Tiafo, that's right. Monte Carlo quarter, which is crazy out that's of qualifying. Crazy. That's insane. Um he actually Phoenix Challenger Semi. Too. Phoenix Challenger Semi, which I know it's a challenger, but that's a strong yeah, challenger. True. Um Indian Wells. I guess no, not really. Yeah, I'm he not, just yeah. qualified. Mid- yeah. Yeah, he did well in challengers. I mean. Like, I think it's, it's, I think 50 is a good line there. Like, I definitely agree with you. He's like, he's yeah. a big regression candidate. It's just like, at some point, like. But he, you know, as you said, he didn't play for a long part of the year. And those are times that he can put on some points. Yeah. I mean, how, like, he can, you know, Washington, US Open, he, he'll probably play Winston Salem, right, to get some more points. Right. So, yeah, well, he might play Olympics. I mean, if his ranking's That's high true. enough, like, he'll be, he, I mean, German is, is he the, I, well, I mean, we know who the top German player is, which is funny because he's, I don't know, he's, he's barely a German, but like, um, Struff yeah. would be second, right? I mean, German tennis is really down, right? Like, who else do they have besides Zverev now? Oscar Ote? <laughs> 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 Oh, Altmaier. 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 or Hoffman. Altmaier. Hoffman would be the third ranked Altmaier. German. Altmaier. But Dominic Kopfer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are German male professional tennis players, but it's, it's, he'll probably get Olympics. And Olympics is no points, correct? No points, I believe. Yeah. Hoffman is, uh, is a good, uh, regression candidate too, in my opinion. I think I disagree there. Um, okay. Where's he ranked? Like the like the challenge. I, I hear you though, because the challenge 51. there is he's like he's he's um there's just so many areas of the schedule where he keeps he's not gonna do it, right? Like um mm-hmm. you know, like any like he really needs to be on like slower surfaces, especially clay, but he needs the altitude in order so that, that way his servant is like his his game can play up. So yeah. I hear you. He's good on like what alt clay altitude. Yeah, he's kind of a little bit of like a clay altitude specialist. Yeah. <laughs> so, but he did. Have I mean, it's just so, it's, it's limited, right? But like, 
Um, you know, a guy who came in really, you know, a guy who I think, uh, talk about guys who could be a little more positive. What about Musetti, man? Musetti finished the year ranked 27th. He's so much better than that. He is, but he's got so many holes in this game as well. Like, fitness is a problem with him. Plus, like, he can't play on faster courts because his swings are too big. So any any quick court, he's 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 0 for, right? Like he's not gonna make any progress there. Um I don't know. I just I think mentally he has some issues. Like I I I just think I actually think that's too high. Like I would probably bet on him being lower ranked than that. Oh, I can't I can't say that. No, I can't say that. I mean, I just think the I, guy I can't tr- like... I can't trust the guy. I, I know he started the year awfully and then kind of did a little bit better as the year went on, but like he made fourth round of Roland Garros, but like, I don't know. It's, I, I, I just don't, I just don't trust the guy. He hasn't right. shown me anything to tell me that he's going to improve significantly. There's just so much talent, man. It is a lot of talent. It is a lot of talent, but, um, all right, let's go into our um we got about half an hour left. Uh let's go um into the um who's going to be ranked higher at the okay. end of 2024. Um let's kind of limit these to like 2 minutes each kind of thing. Yeah, yep. Um, yep. So I, I'll give a couple and then you give a couple. Um, okay. so my first one is going to be Arthur Feast or Talon Greekspor. And you want me to go first? Yeah. I'll go Feast. Um, just just more talent, like and and I think Feast can play on more surfaces than Greeks poor, so I'll go Feast. But I, I think top twenty is reasonable for Feast. I think that's probably like I think what Greek Spore did this year is probably pretty close to the edge for him. Um you know, and I think Greeks I think I think Feast, you know, I mean I think I think Feast could crack the top twenty. Greek Spore is twenty three right now. Feast is thirty six. But Feast, remember the first half of the year, Feast wasn't even ranked high enough to play, so he, he'll he'll be just basically picking up points the first few months of the year. Okay. Greek Spore has to defend Puna. Straight off the bat, right? Which is yeah. going to be Hong Kong this year. Right, right. So, um. I guess I'm going to stay out of this one because like I need Feast to be in the top <laughs> near the top 10. Right. So it's like, yeah. uh, I mean, I came up with this one because I actually think it's really close. Like, I think they're going to meet somewhere in the middle because I think there's some re- slight regression with Greek sport coming, but I also think that there's upside with feasts. So I think like they're kind of both at, at, at year's end. I think they're going to be both meet around the top 20 to be on. Well, Greek Spore is at 23, so it's like I think they're gonna meet around there. So I think like Feast is gonna meet Greek Spore, and Greek Spore is kind of gonna stay the same. Okay. Rest slightly. So that's kind of where I see that here. Um maybe, maybe they'll meet like 15 to 17, actually. Uh, but I, I I'd agree with you. I I go feast slightly. I think feast could end up like 17 or 18 and Greek spore would like stay the same. Okay. That's kind of where I see it. Um, next one is going to be, um, interesting one. Machak or Rusevori. Oh, I think Rusevori easily. I'm not, I love, I like, like when I watch my Makac, I like his game. Okay. Um, but I feel like Makash did this same thing last year where he had a really good swing on the, in, like a really good swing on the indoors mm-hmm. and then wasn't as good. You know, once he had to go back outdoors. Um, okay. So I, I disagree with you, um, which you probably expected because I'm very high on Machak. I just think he's a very talented shot maker and he has a lot of upside. Um, and I think he has, ways to improve improve um and i like that success that he had in the challenger circuit where he was winning match after match after match and i think he like paid his dues there and he's going to make that next step on the main tour rusevori i don't trust him mentally i just think he like he's just a grip and rip tennis player 
Like he doesn't really think through points. He doesn't really construct anything. He just like tries to overpower guys. And like, he's more talented than most, but I think he lacks in certain mental aspects, which are very important in tennis. And like, I don't know. I, I just, I just like Machak more as a complete tennis player long-term. Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I hear you. I, I get it. Um, okay. So it, this it, is... It's more about Makach, Makach than um, Rusevori. Okay. So this is one we disagree on. So I guess we can keep tabs. Yep. So we'll keep tabs. So I've got Makach. No, you got Rusevori, you mean. I have Rusevori. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I got yeah, yeah. Machach. Yeah. Yeah, you get Yeah. Okay. Um, um, all right. I got one. Okay. This probably will come out on books, but I want to see your thoughts. Okay. Highest ranked Brit, Nori, Evans, Murray, Draper. Could scrap Nori out. I think people have kind of gotten used to his game and kind of. He finished in the top 20 him. this year. He finished 19th this year, mm-hmm. even with it being such a, te- a quote unquote terrible year. Because he had a great start to the year, and that golden swing was was really good. Plus, he won a yeah. five hundred. So, um, Evans, there, there's probably some slight positive regression, po- positive regression on him. Slight, because you got to take away those five hundred points from Washington. Uh, but do you? I mean, he's he's. I think like I don't think it's completely like stunning. He shows up to an event a year and wins. Like it might be a two fifty next year, but not a five hundred. But he could win a title. He could. Yeah. But where did he end the year? 38? Yeah. I think with Murray, there's some regression there. I um Murray, I, I put Murray in there mostly for the wolves. <laughs> uh Draper. I mean, he's I, 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 he should be ranked higher. I mean, he was injured for a lot of the year. I mean, he, his talent is his top twenty talent. Um, just physically, it's it's a problem. I think he hasn't retired in a match in quite some time, so I'm I'm getting a little bit <laughs> better on, with the Draper. But like, you know, he he needs like a full year without retirements to like get on my good list again like give me a full year with no retirements please you know yeah but i i, I even like if i remember right he he like gassed out in sophia against uh manorino he gassed out in, in the final and that was against manorino he get gassed out in davis cup against kachmanovic which is really bad <laughs> yeah yeah kachmanovic actually played a really good match but like he seemed the more winded of the two yeah. Uh, after long points. So I don't I don't know. Um that's really, really tough. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna go Draper. Actually. Okay. I just, I just don't trust Nori and Evans. I don't know. Yeah. Well, For me, it's, what about it's you? between it, it's tough. It's a tough one. I think I think the guy you can throw out is Murray. His game just doesn't like like like. I, I just don't think he's like well calibrated right now, like at this stage in his career to get ranking points. He he has tr- trouble backing up wins, you know, and and the fact that he takes so long to win matches or yeah. even play matches, period. You know, like yeah. he doesn't have any other way besides just drawing it out. Because he's such a good competitor, but he just... Well, that's all he has left is his his competitive abilities. I know, which is why the matches are so long. And, like, if he wins one of those, there's no way he's going to come back next day and back it up, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, he did it in Doha. Like, like if I was going to go with, like, most likely to play a match of the year candidate, I would go with Murray. I agree. But if... um, (laughs) But, like, that's not the the, uh, challenge here. Yeah. It's tough, man. Like... This is really tough. I'm tempted to roll with Nori here as bad as he was. Like, I don't know. Like, he's there. 
you know, like he he's there, he plays events, but man, it was bad. All right, you know what? Let's you know what? It. You know what? Oh man, it's tough. <laughs> Give me Evans. Give me, I'll take Evans. You've got Draper, I've got Evans. I'll okay. go Evans. All right, you go Evans. I go Draper. Yeah. If it's Nori, it's a push. Or Murray, but Murray. Nori or Murray. Murray yeah. If it's Murray, we both lose and the challenge is, is over. I actually think it's a miracle that Murray got to 40 in the world. Like with what he but has. He had a good one. Was it Doha he made the final and played Doha, him? Played him final. You know, yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. That's that's an interesting one. Um, all right. Let's go a little bit further down the list here. And let's talk about Dom Stricker or Hamad Medetovic. Hamad. Okay. Um, I just think Hamad, like, I question, like, I mean, this is so bad to say, but, like. Is this better on the name or better on the tennis? Both. Um, (laughs) I, I, I question Stricker on, like, on hardcore, honestly. Like I think on clay where he has more time and like his his because he, he's not the fastest guy in the world. Um, Hamad isn't either. No, but I think Hamad's better off the backhand. Like you know, like like Hamad's got I think a little bit. A, there's he's a little more well rounded than Stricker. Like Stricker's just so I don't know. To me, it's too much surf forehand with Stricker, and uh, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go Hamad. I'm going to go Hamad too, but it's closer. Like, I think it's, it, they're going to end up around the same. Like, I, I really, I, I think Hamad's movement is actually quite bad. Like, he won the uh, next gen finals, and like, yeah. um, the MP9 guys are like really high on him and said he's a guy to watch. But like, you know, you already have like Instagram posts saying, like, is he the next Djokovic because he won the next gen? Let, let, let's pump the brakes with this Hamad guy. Like, I, oh, I for me, more, I'm pumping the brakes a little. I guess I'm like slightly on both. Because like, um, yeah, I'm slightly bullish on both, but I'm slightly uh, bearish on both too. You yeah. know, and I wouldn't be surprised if neither of these guys is in the top fifty end of next uh, by the end of the year. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah, I, I think we're pretty close on these two guys. Yeah. So, um, next one for me is um. Marajan or JJ Wolf? I'm gonna go Wolf. I think Marajan's the better. T- he, Mar- I think Marajan. A, a few issues here, right? First, Marajan, like <clears throat> too much, um, like too much variability match to match, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we think of Marajan as being this young dude, but like they're the same age. Okay. And then the biggest reason, and I'll keep saying about this, man, like when we're talking about ranking points, like there's just so many American 500s that Wolf is, you know, Wolf's going to play all the American 500s. He's going to play Delray Beach, Atlanta. Um, What are the other ones? There's Winston-Salem. There's like five or six American, like weaker American tournaments he can play. Atlanta and do well in. Yeah, but they both play 25 tournaments. Like, do you really think home home court means that much for JJ Wolf to get ranking points? Like, no. Yeah. I don't think yeah. uh, it's not like Fritz where there's a common trend. I think it's a combination of home court plus like home court and weaker events. Right. It's like, it's almost like an excuse. Like, it's almost like he has like a built in excuse to play weaker events because he can I think Marjan will court. find a way to play a lot of 250s and stuff too. Like, I'm going Marjan here. I just think his upside is so, so much higher. Um, okay. I think it's uh it's close, but it's like not that close. I just I just think Marjan also I think he's gonna take that next step next year. Okay. Like I th- I wouldn't be he right now he is ranked. Um where is he? 64. 64? Yeah. If and you gave me minus 110 for him to be top 50, I would take it. Okay. So I think I could say the same thing about Wolf though. But Wolf is ranked higher now, right? He's 53. 53. Yeah. So 
Yeah. I think I think that's kind of where he belongs, to be honest. Okay. All right. So I'm going Marjan, you're going Wolf. That's an interesting one. Yeah. I, I hear you on the tennis, like, and maybe I'm overrating it, but I think uh I, I like the I like Wolf having like not just two fifties and five hundreds, but weak American two fifties and five hundreds where like only the American guys play. Okay. Okay, what's uh you give me two? Um I had one in mind. Um let's stick with this same country theme. Okay. Laszlo Jere or Ketch Manovich? Two guys who like kind of went the op in the opposite direction this year. So like you know, Kachmanov just probably had the better career, but Jerry made a step up this year, and Kachmanov took a huge step back. Uh, I don't really think bad year is, for Kachmanovich. I don't think this is even close. I'm I'm going with Lazo Jury here. I just I I really like what I saw from him in terms of rally tolerance and in terms of just physicality and just like being there. Um, and I just can't say the same same thing about Kachmanovich. And like with ranking, you're you're weighing like how they how their year is as a whole right so like if we did the titles for example right like who's going to win more titles i might say kajmanovic i think that's closer but in terms of ranking i definitely go with jury okay all right yeah yeah i i i don't like where kajmanovic is at right now at all but i think like man if you're looking for a guy who's got the talent to to pick it back up, it's Ketchmanovic. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll go. I would go Jerry there too. But I thought it was, I thought mm-hmm. it was interesting because I think you know it's just two guys who went so much in opposite directions. Okay. Yeah, I think they're gonna. I think Ketchmanovic is gonna turn the other way slightly, but I also think Jury is gonna continue on where he's going too. So I think he where where's Yuri ranked now? He's thirty three. I think he he's in the twenty five to thirty range. So I think he's going to slightly move up. Bye. All right, here's a fun one. Okay, a goot two old guys, a goot or Vavrinka. Oh. <laughs> oh my god! I have to go with a goot. I just think like. Favrinka just can't move, period. But yeah. he still figures out how to win the occasional match. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he does. And and surprisingly, he does find a way to win Grand Slam matches when it's like longer, best of five. Yeah. So, like he struggles more in best of three still, like when he's like injured old and can't move. It, it's funny to me. It's a real, it's a really good one, actually. I, you're talking me out of a goot. I, where is a goot ranked right now? Because like you have to win. Fifty-seven. When you can, Fifty-seven. And Vavrinka's forty-nine. Wow, they're actually pretty close. But is Vavrinka good to go? Like with an ankle injury? Because he had an ankle injury at the end of the year. I mean, he's had a lot. He had a lot of injury, right? He had, he had, he had, he had. He was injured for a good part of last year. But then Agut also has to accumulate all his points in January because it seems like he can't play any other month of the year. Yeah, like he just forgets to play how to play tennis the rest of the year. Like it's crazy. Well, he also had a good run in Halle, was it? Where he made he made a final or a semi? Oh yeah, semi lost to Rublev. Like he's actually still pretty good on grass too. He or he still is like. Feasible on grass RBA, but like, yeah. Hmm. I. Who are you going here? Oh, man. I'm gonna go Stan. Like, I think he looked less injured than RBA, and I think that's the tiebreaker here. I know he can't move, but like, at least I think he'll stay healthy, or er, than RBA. I actually think they're both not likely to stay healthy. I, I think I agree with that, but I'm, I'm I'm picking between like two guys who it's like who's gonna play, who's gonna be more hurt. The thing is, if they're hurt, if they're both hurt, Vavrinka has a better chance of winning matches just because he hits so much bigger. You know, like yeah. 
his ball striking is always going to be there. Um, I'm going Wawa. I, I think I, I, the more I think about this, like, cause the other problem is I think our, I mean, this, this really could be the end for RBA. You know, I, I always talk about this because Ferrer is my favorite player of all time, but like Ferrer had a massive issue once, once he couldn't practice, he couldn't play. Yeah, that on a consistent basis. Yeah, yeah, and I think the same thing might be true of RBA because, like, they're kind of similar styles, with like attacking with precision as opposed to like power. Mm-hmm. Like that's kind of our been RBA's game to his whole career. Um, whereas, like, I think like the pure power of a guy like Wawa like plays better. He's also got a much I bigger agree. serve, and so he could just sure. like you know serve his way through some matches. You know, even in. You know, and he has done that. Um, yeah, you you talk me out about Goot. It, it's it's Wawa. I I I agree. It's a, it's good reasoning. Um, uh, but yeah, Agut needs to practice for sure, right? He's a reps guy. All the yeah. Spaniards really are. So they are, yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. Let me give you two. Um. Now this one is interesting. Arnaldi or Lechka? <laughs> oh man. Oh. It's a good one. It is a really good one. Um, where is Arnaldi right now? Is he in the top 50? Arnaldi is 44 and Lechka's 31. Man. And I think they're gonna meet in the middle. It's amazing because if you told me that, like, if you asked us this in the beginning of the year, right, it'd be Lechka easily. Right. But then Lechka really slid after like middle of really after the Australian, but really yeah. like middle of February. Like it never got any better. And mentally, he's he struggles. Like he he once he's down in a match, it's done. Yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. right straight off the bat, he has Australian Open quarterfinals to defend. That's not happening. Yeah. So like he might. That's why I like I'm taking Arnaldi here. Um, because like right off the eight ball, like Lechka might lose those points and he might be ranked right near Arnaldi Arnaldi to begin, you know. Yeah, I I think this is really, really close. Um but then again, Lechka has so much more upside, right? Than Arnaldi. I don't know, just in terms of power. I think he's the better athlete. I think. I think Arnaldi's stronger mentally, but I, I think I Lechka, think I think uh I don't know. I don't know. Like Lechka, I think like in terms of being like a more explosive athlete, maybe, but I think that Arnaldi's a better mover. Um oh, yeah, yeah. I'll go Arnaldi. Arnaldi? Okay. Yeah. I tend to agree with you. I, I'm going Arnaldi. I just don't like what I saw from Lechka second half of the year. Yeah. Um but I it's really close. Like I, I think they're going to meet somewhere in the middle. I don't know. I think actually Arnoldi might just come up and, and end up somewhere, but it's tough, man. So like we talk about, Oh, this guy's going to rise. Like this guy's going to be a big riser, but then like you look and like, I'm looking at like the guys he has to pass. Like the guys around Lechkar are Bublik, Echeverry, FAA, Baez, Musetti, Fokina. Those are tough guys like, to pass. Yeah. They're tough guys to pass. And all those guys might move up too. Right. Yeah, it, it's close. It's really close. Um, All right, I've got one. Okay. Yari or Baez? I, and then we can throw Sarundalo in that mix as well, but for me, Sarundalo is a pretty easy number one of those three. I'm going Yari. I, I think it's pretty clear, to be, to be honest. Yari that, or Dolo? Dolo slightly, but it's it's close. But you think Yari's well ahead of Baez? Yes. Yeah, I don't think it's even close. Like, I would put Yari, like, like my, I had Yari in one of these. Like, I was comparing him to Echeverry. Like, would Yari be ranked higher than Etch at the end of the year? And I think Etch okay. is more than Baez. Yeah, I think if we're doing ranking points, I think Yari's a better candidate. I agree. Like, yeah, it's. It's interesting though, because both of these guys are kind of like specialists, right? So, but well, yeah, why, I, why like Yari is a specialist, like an altitude clay guy, but also 
why is he like like why can't he be, be better on other surfaces? He just doesn't move that as well on other surfaces. He's just moving. He's improving it's, that it's, aspect. It's... What? He's improving that aspect. Like I and think he's improving, he has... but he still is not good. Right, but Baez doesn't have means to improve. Right, he will always be what he is. Yeah, yeah, I think you're Whereas right. Whereas he already I think, does. I think you're right. I mean, this is yeah. So, I I have one for you, uh, Zhi Zhen Zhang or Roman Safulin, and we can yeah. add we can add Popper into the mix too. Um. Ooh, so let me. I'll try to rank them. I'm gonna go Zhang. I'm gonna go Zhang, Safulin, Popperin. I just don't think Pop. I, I got really excited about about Popperin during the Australian run. He can be great Popperin at times, but he's just way, way too inconsistent. Way too many bad matches. Um, whereas I think Zhang, it's like one issue of mm-hmm. just like tactics, right? And if the ta- and like we saw it, like we saw it last year during the Asian swing, the tactics got a lot better. So I think like I think that will improve. Um and then who's the third guy there? Safulin. Safulin. Yeah, I'm gonna go Zhang, Safulin, Popperin. Like, I get it. It was a nice rise from Safulin, but um and Does actually he... not, not even that though, because like I kind of like Safulin though, because he like he like this is a little underrated about him. He's slowly gotten better throughout his whole career. Like he every has. year he does just a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And like we never saw it before, right? Because it was all it was like always on the challenger tour. Right. But for him, every year is a little bit better. Um so it's tough. Yeah. But I think I'm gonna go um See, I, I grouped these got three guys all together because like they're kind of similar players, to be honest. Yeah, I think to, so. For me, Pop runs a clear third, and then I'm gonna go with Yang over. Well, ooh, I'll go with <laughs> Yang over Safulin, but it's close. They're similar players. I think I think Yang Safulin. You can go either way on. I have Pop runs a pretty clear third. I tend to agree with you. I, I like what I saw from Xi Jinping. Um, it's really close. It's really really close. I, I I agree with you with the order too. So, um, one more one more for you. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, FAA or Kachinov? I've got Kachinov. I've got Kachanov. I mean, it's tough because FAA's upside is there, but I've got Kachanov, and my reasoning here is that um, my reasoning is that um, I, I just think like we talked about before, right? Like, despite Kachanov not having a lot of upside, like match to match as a tennis player, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean he can't do well. Like, it doesn't mean he can't make like he he's so good in so many areas that he can make runs and slams. He can, um, yeah, like he can make runs and slams. He can like, he, he like, it's not infeasible that he could be top 10. I, I wouldn't say it's likely, but it's not infeasible. I, I agree with you. I just think I, and the reason why I agree with you is because with Kachanov, less can go wrong. Yeah. With FAA, a lot can go wrong. Whereas with Kachanov, less goes wrong. Yeah. And that's the only reason. That's that's the only way I can really sum it up here. Like with FAA, I'm not going to be convinced that he makes it back until he makes it back. Yeah. And I don't buy into his whole like. It was so funny how after he won that title, he was like, "Oh, I'm back," and I was oh, like, yeah. "No, no." Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the interview was kind of funny. He's like, "Oh, I love my rack to do the talking," and like you know, like yeah. I, I made it back. Like I, you know, this, this is who no. I am. And I'm like, dude, like he won, beating like, Chipchenko. What? You know, he barely beat Chipchenko. Yeah, right? yeah, he exactly lost that match like five Chipchenko. different times. Exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. is that really the goal at this point? Is that, is that where we are? You know, right. so exactly. Yeah. Um, and one more for you. Um, Hercatch or Shelton? 
Shelton. Shelton. Yeah. I mean, look, right? Like, Shelton. So, like, it's easy to say, oh, he made a couple of big runs and he's going to have regression and lose points there. 100% I agree. But also, like, look how bad he was for large swaths the rest of the season. And, like, why can't he do better there? Also, like, even Clay. Like, is his game made for Clay? No. But, like, why can't he perform decently well on, like, especially, like, altitude play with that serve? Like, right? Like, why can't, like, he, like, he can get better. And, and, like, if there's a guy who can get better, it's Shelton because he's so raw. Like, if there's a guy who you're going to bet on, like, upside and improvement, like, he has such little experience in tennis compared to these guys, right? Like, forget age. He has such little tennis experience. Yeah, I, I, you know, but, like, I feel like he could potentially regress to, you know, what he was in, like, Cincinnati and Toronto. Like, it's a, it's amazing his improvement from those events and like Wimbledon, for example. I understand that's a surface he never really played on. So let's let's compare like Toronto and Cincinnati to what he did post US Open, right? Like the improvement was just so drastic. And it was like, and I don't think there's anything that says that like he will stay at that level throughout 2024, right? Also, he has quarterfinal points at the Aussie to defend right away, you know. Um, so I, I, I'm going her catch here. I just think like the floor is higher. Yeah, the floor is higher. The floor is the floor is higher. But I think the same. I mean, this is a classic floor ceiling debate. I'll go Shelton. So I think that's when we're different too, right? So, so I have Shelton. You have her catch. I have her catch. Yeah. I just right. I. I think, you know, should, trust me, I, I have Shelton on my my team. Like, I think he's going to have a good team. But, like, if I'm betting on someone, I kind of want that surefire floor guy more than the ceiling guy. Plus, like, Shelton's floor is pretty low. Like, the level that he showed in Toronto and Cincinnati and whatever he showed before that, like, uh, Indian Wells, Miami, that was pretty bad. It wasn't great. Like, remember he lost those two matches to Shane? Oh, the floor is low. Yeah, but, I mean, the, the floor... But, like, he's allowed to improve, right? Like, and I guess that's what I'm betting on is that I'm betting on, like, that that's not the same guy, especially because we we literally saw the improvement with our eyes, right? Like, we could, but like, the we could, level of improvement was so drastic that I think some of it is false improvement. Okay. I don't think it's it's maintainable improvement, you know? So you think the tactics getting better, he thinks he's, he's, his tactics will regress. Yeah, also he won, like, every single tie break. And we saw like when Tiafo did that, he was yeah. That's true. That that that's always a bad sign, right? Like that's always like winning tiebreak is always a bad sign, right? So I just think like, you know, with Tiafo, once he started losing tiebreaks, there was some serious regression, right? Yeah. So and I think that that's going to be the case with Shelton. So also with her catch, I think there's positive regression in terms of tiebreaks because like with his serve, he was like fifty fifty. And I think if he gets better in like key moments, I think he could. Uh, he I mean, win his, like 60% his, of his tie break. Break record for his career is not that good, though. Um, his tiebreak record for his career is. He's barely over 500. Even if you take since 20. Even if you take since 2021, when he really became like a top player. Uh-huh. In the past three years, he's 74 and 69 in tie breaks. So about 500. Yeah. Okay. I mean, maybe he gets to, maybe he gets to like 53%, 55%, but like it's not going to be Djokovic, you know? And that's the case with most guys. Like tie breaks really are a coin flip. Yeah, but I'm just saying if he can improve a little bit from the baseline and maybe hit a little bit bigger on the forehand, for example, like I think there's some positive regression there, you know, and not get like super tight and a key moment, you know, like as you get experienced that more, you know, typically you... you yeah, but he hasn't experienced that enough. Yeah, I I mean, he experiences tie breaks probably more than anyone on tour. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so. yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Give me a couple, and then we'll we'll wrap it up. Um. 
All right. Um, trying to think of a good one here for you. All right. Uh, Kokonakis or O'Connell? Two very different Australians. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh... I'm going to go O'Connell. I, I tend to like to back the more mentally stable player when it's this close. It's it's a good one. It's a really good one. Um, I'm going to go Kokonakis. I think once the ranking points get this low, like you want the guy who could like make a run. Okay. Um, You know, and you know, like, like and Kokonakis, Kokonakis really make a run like uh, in Adelaide. In Australian Open. Okay. <laughs> That's really it. After that, he's going to be losing second round. You know, first round, second round. I mean, on grass, right? Like, on grass, he should be better with the serve. I don't know if he's ever done that well on grass. But he's an Australian guy. He should do well on grass. Okay. It's close, but I'm going O'Connell here. I just... So that's another one we just... So, yeah, so I have I have Kokonakis and you have O'Connell. Okay. Um, I I got one for you. Uh, Ugo Umber or Grigor Dimitrov? I'll go Ugo. So you think there's? Yeah, I'll go Ugo. So you think there's some regression with Dimitrov? And you, how much do you think Ugo can improve from where he is now, which is twenty? Like, it's tough. Once you get to where he is, it's Yari, Nori. I guess Nori, there's some regression there. Shelton, Tiafo, Kachinov, Dimitrov, Paul, Demonor. Like, I think 15 is reasonable. Like, I don't think he has to be that much worse than, D- like, than Demonor or Paul. Okay. So, you, so Dimitrov is 14 right now. So you think they kind of meet in the middle? Um, I think that's what will happen. I mean, it's tough because either of these guys could go sideways. Right. But I think there's more of a chance that Dimitrov goes sideways. Also, Ugo had a great year compared to what he did the previous year. Can he back up another good year? I, I tend yeah, to... Yeah, but you can say the same thing about Dimitrov, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if Dimitrov can back up what he did. So... Like, I think I'll take the younger guy. Okay. Yeah, I, t- I tend to agree with you there. But I think it's really close. It's really, like, they, they might end up, like, within one ranking spot. Like, this one's close. I don't know. It could be close. It could be close. Um. And my last one is uh, two American guys, uh, Paul or Tiafo. Yeah, I knew you were going to bring this one up. Um, <laughs> um, geez, man. Like, I think this is one where, like, I think there's, like, these are two guys who are very similar in that, like, they could be great. Like, like, like on any given day, they could be great, but they also don't have to be. Mm-hmm. Really, it's tough. Yeah, it's, this is a really tough one. Um, I 
I think there's... I'm going to go Tiafo. I'm going to go Tiafo. I think he'll. I think. I think he's slightly better. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think he's slightly better. Mm-hmm. On clay, slightly, not much. No. And even though you wouldn't think with their games, and I think he's slightly better at taking like 250s and 500s a little more seriously. But again, it's slight. Like, what did Paul do in 250s or 500s this past year? Finals of Acapulco. Fair. Um, he didn't he make the final or semi? I think he made the semis of uh, uh, Eastbourne. Yeah, semis of Eastbourne or finals of Eastbourne. Finals of Eastbourne. Um, how did he do in Washington? Didn't play. Oh. He played Los Cabos and lost to Demonor. Yeah. In the semis? No, um, quarters? No, semis, I think. Yeah, I think, yeah. No, quarters. 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 Yeah. Lost um, to Isner in Newport. That's not good. He had the legendary loss to uh, Albot in Delray Beach. Yeah, because <laughs> he wanted to watch the the other guy we're talking about, Tiafo in the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in a celebrity game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that would be a legend. I don't think I'll ever forget that loss. Like that would be a legendary loss for me. Like for all time, I will never forget. Like and you'll never forget Shardy losing to or uh who was it? Go on losing to Go Shardy. On losing to Chardy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh I'm gonna go Paul here. I I don't know. I, I just don't like what I saw from Tiafo energy wise. It, it's very, very close, but um, I'm going to go Tommy Paul. I hear you. I hear you. I, I think it's, it's, yeah, but it's really close. Okay. Do you have one more for me before we wrap it up? Um. So I'm trying to find a good one here. Um. Uh, all right Let, let's finish with this okay we have to put this person in, in this podcast somehow and i can't think of a better okay. way bublik or shevchenko <laughs> oh geez that's a good one that's a really good one uh yeah we didn't talk bublik at all right I mean, he's just such a basic guy to talk about, honestly. Like, he's fun, but he's so basic to talk about. Because, like, if he wants to be there, he's a great player. If he wants to play there, and if it's, like, his surface, this type of event, if he doesn't, it's not, right? Like, How far are these guys apart now? 48 versus 32. You know what? I'm going to go Shevchenko here. Because, like, I think Shevchenko is kind of on the upswing. Like, the arrow is going up with him. Um. I mean, he does have maturity issues, but like, I think he's working hard every day. Like he's putting in the hours, whereas like, obviously with Boob, like, like we don't even have to talk about him putting hours in. Uh, it's hours, man. <laughs> if only he puts know, hours in the Murray. club. What? Hours in the club. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like No, I mean, I think like, wasn't it, wasn't there some like major, like rel- somewhat relatively important match where he was like up playing FIFA, like all night the night before. And then he actually played okay <laughs> on the tennis match too. Like, <laughs> I think he said I in the interview, like, yeah, I, I cut with like five hours of FIFA last night. Like, well, I also don't trust Bublik being able to, um, you know, defend his Holly title. Oh, so for me, I actually trust him. I don't trust him being able to defend any particular event, but I think he'll scalp a tournament or two. Cause like, that's what he does, right? He like makes he a couple good runs to, to cash a couple paychecks and then he's good for the year. Like 
I know, and he ra- found a way to rack up fourteen hundred points. Are you are you going with Bublik? No, I'm gonna go Shevchenko. I mean, okay. basically, my reasoning is like, look, even with all of Shevchenko's issues, he still cracked the top fifty this year, right? And like, there's nothing that makes me believe that Bublik is gonna get any like, like there's no, like week to week, Bublik is completely unpredictable. Season to season. He's one of the more predictable guys. He is, yeah. As you said, that's like, what he does. He just like finds a way to cash in on a few tournaments and then just doesn't care the rest of the year. And honestly, like he's he's like one of the only guys on the tour that's like this. I know. But I don't even care if he gets injured. Because <laughs> like if he gets injured for like four months, it just means <laughs> he has to try a little bit harder the other eight months. Like <laughs> All right, I'm going to end with this one. I think it's quite interesting, but I think uh the MP9 guys, they brought up they brought up this guy and uh I think there's room for some slight regression with or positive reg- um uh, regression with him. Um but I'm going to go Baez versus VDZ. I'll go VDZ. Even though Baez is ranked 28 right now and VDZ is ranked 50. Yeah, yeah. I mean, v- VDZ wasn't the top. Like, this was a really bad year for VDZ, and he really looked out of it mentally. He just really didn't, like, you know, at times he didn't look like he wanted to play. Um, But he did pick it up a little bit at the back half of the year. Like, you know, ah, oh, man, now I don't know. It's a lot of spots to make up. You know what? Give me Baez now that I've thought about it. Like, Baez is still young. Like, I don't think he's going to get much better, but he could get a little bit better on hardcore. He, he did well in Winston-Salem. Like, he did well in one of the indoor tournaments, I think. Like, you know, like, there's... there's Like, he showed a little bit more at times. Um, so give me Baez. I don't love it, but give me Baez. I'm going to go Baez, too. I, I think there's some room for improvement with VDZ, obviously, because his, the year was so bad, but like not that much to make up 20 spots. Like I think he's going to be somewhere between 35 and 38 in that area at the end of the year. All right. Here's one for you. Yeah. This, this will be a good one to finish on. I think. Okay. For, for the lulls. Chapo versus Schwartzman. Ooh. <laughs> Damn, I, these guys. One are... guy mentally looks like he has no interest in playing. One guy wants to play, but just can't. These guys are like such so much of an afterthought that like I didn't even think about them to be honest. Yeah, which is insane. Um, Wow, that's a good one. That was a really good one. Um, I got to go Schwartzman, man. I got to go Schwartzman just because, like, first of all, Chapo hasn't played in, like, forever. So, like, I don't know how severe this injury is. So that the fact that that's a question mark kind of leans me to go Schwartzman just because like Schwartzman has been playing playing badly but playing a little bit plus he showed small signs of getting better towards uh the end of the year um and I just trust Schwartzman mentally more you know like I can't trust Chapo to you know play better tactically and make more balls on the court and like not just bash winners like you know so, I don't know. What about you? But the upside with Chapo is so much bigger. Like, he's he's top 15 talent, you know? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go Chapo. Like, okay. It, for me, it's a real question of like, but honestly, like, it's a real question for both these guys because, like, does Schwartzman even like? Will he even get into? He won't get into Australia, right? He'll have to qualify. I'm assuming. I don't think either of these guys will. I don't think either of these guys are in the top hundred right now. No, they're not. Schwartz, um, Schwartzman is 109. Schwartzman's 114. Right. So, 
I mean, they're going to get wild cards. Like if they're healthy, they're going to get wild cards to some some events, you know. Oh well, but, but will they? Will they though? I mean, like, are these guys enough of draws to get like like Schwartzman will to um to anything um Schwartzman will to anything in South America, but I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I mean, Chapo probably will just because like. But a lot of times, especially for the slams, they give out wild cards to guys, to home players. Yeah, I just think, like, he's too much of a draw from a ticket perspective that he's going to get some wild cards. Yeah. Yeah, neither of these guys are on the entry list. Wow. So they're both alternates. Interesting. Well, that, that was a great one to end on. That was... Okay, oh, one more. Nakashima or Cressy? (laughs) welcome nakashima yeah me too me too it's a sad one but yeah yeah all right this this was a fun way to preview 2024 i thought yeah it was a lot of fun like it was i had a lot of fun just just like talking like oh who's gonna who's going to be better or like, you know, who's going to win the Australian open? Like, you know, it's yeah. Djokovic center or Alcaraz or Medvedev, right. It's going to be one of those four guys. Right. So yeah. I think this is a better way to discuss it, but hopefully um, by next week, some, some lines are up and like, we can actually, yeah. Uh, hopefully some of these futures are up. Bets. I completely agree with you. Cause I, I really want to yeah. see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, and hopefully we can get some, have some guests on. Like, I would love to have Tidbits or Dave on from MP. Yeah, we'll see what we can do with some guests. Get it? We, we got that, that, that needs to be another priority for us for 2024. We had a few guests. We, uh, we got to bring, we got to bring more guests back because the guests, man, the guests, the guests really help. Anybody who guessed it, uh, especially Josh Hall, who also does a lot of work on the, uh, does a lot of work on our thumbnails and such. Uh, and and uh, is a huge contributor to this pod. Uh, also, a big shout out to him, too. And uh, my, I think Miles. Miles, Miles came on yeah. and, and contributed as a guest one time. Um, we wanted yeah, to anybody... get tidbits. It didn't work out, right? Yeah. So we yeah. need to have him on on the pod a couple times. Uh, we'll do spaces this year. Um, yeah. And I think we, we got to improve with our tracking. The tracking has to be a big focus. And like, you know, all the um, – we'll do the um, GBM official plays again, right? That's yeah. going to be a thing. Uh, but I think like week week to week we should kind of – be more transparent kind of give a summary on a hundred percent a hundred percent we did not get the job done there so yeah so that's going to be a bigger priority for us too so so next week um hopefully we get a guest on if we don't it will just be us but we'll be uh talking you know whatever lines are up we're going to kind of go through them for the preseason. whatever lines are up baby and then united cup um hong kong and brisbane i think start the year then we have adelaide um, yeah it's coming up right, right? It's like a, we only have another week and a half of sleepy season left right Right, ten days. The first match is on the the twenty ninth. So, Alrighty, we gotta yeah. get we gotta get some lines up, man, because I, I we gotta get some uh, I gotta get some features down next week. We do, we do. All right, everyone, have a have a good night. Yeah, good good shot, good good pot, everyone. Right. Have yep. a good time. See ya.